daughters of the highest God. After all the celebrations and the messages of us being powerful, being strong, being worthy and favored by God, let us remain humble because we can only be as powerful if we remain on our knees. Everybody, I just want to encourage you, the only time we are strong and powerful is when we are on our knees. This morning, um, our topic is on prayer, as I've just said, and we have Professor Ray Cases, who is running a series on prayer. He started with us last week, and he reminded us just that it is possible to be useful without being visible. This is your time, my pastor. Please speak to us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the welcoming once again. I remain very, very grateful to all of you for allowing me to share this platform with you. So many of you on the platform I see today, we are very close to 300 on the Zoom uh, platform. May the good Lord bless you. Let's say a prayer, then we listen to the word of God. Father in heaven, we have prayed, we are praying again, and we will keep praying because we need your favor, we need your direction, we need your wisdom. We pray that this morning, as we come together to pray, may our eyes be opened and may our hearts be opened and may we receive you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The message I would like to share with you today is titled, You Are Now Safe, But Will You Be Safe? You Are Now Safe, But Will You Be Safe? Ladies and gentlemen, at the present, you are safe, but what about the future? It is not important to just be safe now. You also need to be safe in the future. This is why people take insurance. This is why people develop plans because they want to be safe now and safe in future. If you are now safe, must you be concerned whether you will be safe in the future? Do not be comfortable with the present safety you also need to be concerned about future safety. The message today is you are now safe, but will you be safe in future? What makes you comfortable and safe now? What threatens your safety in future? It is important we understand these things so that in understanding them, we can make sure that while we are safe now, we will also be safe in the future. I want us to turn to Revelation chapter seven, verse one to four. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter seven, verse one to four, the Bible tells us that after these, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. When the Bible says that there were four angels who are stopping the wind from blowing, the Bible is referring to strife, to problems, to challenges that could face the world. And the angels have been sent by God in the four corners of the earth. And you know, this has been understood to be the four directions of the world, the north, the south, the east, the west. And there are angels stationed there to ensure that nothing goes wrong. That's why we are saying, you are now safe. I am now safe because there are four angels out there unknown to us who are preventing a lot of crazy things from happening, a lot of terrible things from happening. There are angels out there who are keeping us safe. There are angels, the Bible says, who are out there to prevent any wind from blowing on the land, the sea, or any tree. Trouble would have come from the land. Trouble would have come from the sea. Trouble would have come from vegetation. But there are angels who are doing this preventing. 
we need to praise God, brothers and sisters, that while it is unknown to us, while we are not able to see, John the Revelator was able to see that there are angels who are keeping us safe. We are not just safe because of our security, because of our auto automated security system, CCTV cameras and weapons that we carry around. We are safe because God has stationed angels that we don't see and are known to us who are keeping us safe. Then the Bible says in Revelation chapter seven, verse two, that then I saw another angel coming up from the east having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. And, and he says, and he says that do not harm in verse three, do not harm the land, the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. So these angels who are preventing trouble from coming are also the angels who will bring trouble upon the earth because of the sin of the people that people have committed. So these angels have stopped themselves from bringing trouble because they want us first to be sealed, to belong to God, to be identified that we permanently belong to God. So these angels whose assignment is to bring trouble to the world are the same angels who are preventing that trouble. And another angel comes and says, please don't bring trouble on earth until we finish sealing God's people. That means our safety, your safety, my safety is as long as the sealing process is goes, goes on. If we are still being sealed, the angels will continue preventing the crisis from happening. But once the sealing is done, crisis will come upon the earth more than the crisis that we are seeing at the present time. And that's why we are saying that we are now safe but will we be safe in the future? That's the question we are asking. And then he says, then I heard the number of those who are sealed to be 144,000 from all tribes of Israel, from all tribes of Israel. My brothers and sisters, I just thought this morning to share with you and say that we have enough threats facing us as individuals, as nations, and even as a whole world. But God has deliberately prevented harm from coming to you, from coming to me, from coming to all of us. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, we deserve the harm, but God graciously has prevented it. With our poor financial decisions, we deserve the financial problems that we could face. With our poor social skills, we don't even know how to communicate and interact with each other. We deserve every social problem that we are facing. Our mouths are enough, our tongues are enough to give us enough relationship problems that we deserve that will give us depression and death. But God is gracious that he has prevented it. We deserve every health problem with our careless eating, Sometimes eating without washing hands, sometimes we don't wash our utensils well, sometimes we eat food that is not proper, we eat junk and we deserve every health problem that can possibly come to us. But God is gracious. There are angels who are preventing these things from happening. We deserve every mental problem that we go through. We deserve every academic problem, taking note that sometimes we go to school and instead of studying, we spend the whole school term running around, enjoying life. Then during exam season, we want to catch up with everything in two days. We deserve every failure. But God is gracious that he prevents it from happening to us. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that we deserve every terrible thing that can happen to us. But God is so gracious. He's so gracious that he has assigned angels who would have allowed trouble to come to us to prevent that trouble from coming. That's why we are saying you are now safe, but will you be safe in the future? 
We are now safe as God seals his people. To seal is to make a final settlement on who gets eternal life based on individual choice. That's the sealing. When God says, this one eternal life, this one eternal life, he's sealing, he's identifying people who will get eternal life. Our safety today is not just because we prayed, but because God wants you to quickly make eternal decisions for, to be forever safe. So you realize that God has given us a chance to make eternal decisions. So the reason why you are safe today is not because you prayed. It's not just because you prayed, but because also in his eternal plan has decided that you must be safe today so that you can make an eternal decision. So the safety today is not just because we prayed, but because God is gracious. Your health has not just been kept together by prayer, but by God's patience waiting for you to make eternal decisions. So the reason why we, are, we have not died of COVID-19, coronavirus, is not because we have been prayerful and using herbs, but because God is hoping that between the period of our sickness and the threat around us, we will make eternal decisions to belong to God forever and ever. That is what God is waiting for. And so we are now safe, not because we are just, not just because we are praying, not just because we are chewing herbs, not because we are social distancing and not, and, and you know, sanitizing ourselves. We are safe because God has granted the safety deliberately. You are not safe because you followed some clever advice given to you on how to run your family. You are safe because God has deliberately allowed peace in that family so that you can make eternal decisions. So what God is waiting is eternal decisions, but sometimes we forget God is waiting eternal decisions and we make prayer the focus so that we sit around thinking, mm, if it was not prayer, I would have died. No, God is waiting for you to make eternal decisions. That's why you are not dead. It's not just because you prayed, but because God wants you. There is eternity, which is the bigger stake in God's agenda. You are now safe. But the question is, will you be safe? So do not settle down at praying to be safe from financial problems, from health problems, from academic problems, from social problems, etc. God is already keeping us safe from those things without even us knowing. Do you know our prayers are never even comprehensive? Did you know that? Sometimes you pray for two things when the threats the angels who are about to release on you are 25 and you are only praying for three. And from 22 other troubles, God has kept you safe. Why? Because you are good. You know you are not good. I know I'm not good. Why? Because you are prayerful. We are not even prayerful enough. Our list is not even comprehensive. God does that so that you and me can make eternal decisions. That we can decide to belong to God. If it is baptism, we get baptism. It, if it is joining the church, we join the church. If it is leaving the sinful things behind us and living a new life in Christ, that is what God is waiting for. That is what God wants from you. And that's why he has kept you safe and kept me safe. And that's why we are saying, you are now safe. But will you be safe in future? We are now safe because God has deliberately kept us safe. But when God finishes sealing his people, will you be safe? Will I be safe? You are now safe because you pray, but much more because God has kept us safe from harm until we make eternal decisions, which will decide our eternal destiny. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we pray this morning, as we plead with God this morning about our various lists of troubles, the sick, the bereaved, those with the financial challenges, those who have lost their jobs, remember that worse things will have happened. Worse things will have happened. But God has prevented the worst. Why did God prevent the worst? God prevented the worst so that you can make an eternal decision. Don't waste the moment make eternal decisions. Eternal decisions have to do with your relationship with God and your relationship with others. My prayer today, my friends, is that God will help me to realize that there is an eternity at stake, even as I present my day-to-day -day issues. 
before him. May God bless us so much. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our safety today. We realize that it's not just because we prayed, but because you are gracious enough to stop the four angels who would have brought trouble, that they are now preventing trouble from coming. That even the trouble we experience today is very little compared to what would have come if you had not kept us safe. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that we will put eternity as a priority. A priority of our finances, a priority of our relationship, a priority of our health, so that we can do that which God expects and we be sealed for the kingdom of God. This is our prayer in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.